Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Salons and barbershops open for business once again. Right now on GMSA, the details you need to know before making your appointment. Plus the latest on the coronavirus here and around the country, where the death toll now is right now, and who tested positive in the White House. And a live look outside with CityCam changes. Boy, we were getting blown all over the place yesterday. Winds calm a little bit. Temperatures pretty reasonable. Sarah Spivey has got it all for you. Coming up in just a second. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock on Saturday. It's May 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, it was pretty windy yesterday evening. <laughs> it was a big surprise. I went and got a haircut because my hair was blowing so much. Yeah, uh, get, I see. Get, get I'm sure. That's why sure I kind of like your own personal kite. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we really are seeing much pleasant weather conditions this morning. Did you guys step out and notice the lack of humidity out mm -hmm. there? I loved it. Yeah, very beautiful outside this morning. Temperatures are pretty comfortable as well, uh, but we do have clouds out there. Cloudy skies to start our Saturday and our Mother's Day weekend. And just so you know, we're going to be looking at pretty nice conditions all weekend long with uh, temperatures only climbing into the low 80s for both today and tomorrow. So so again, those clouds are, are working their way in from the south and from the east, but we will see some sunshine in the afternoon. We've got to talk about Mother's Day weekend and we've got to talk about our next chance for some showers and storms. I'll be back with a look at that coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Sarah. A significant number of positive COVID-19 cases in the community were announced during Friday's daily briefing, including two deaths. But many in the community have recovered, according to Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Our Alicia Beretta is live with more on these cases. Good morning. Well, in our community, there are 30 new cases. 24 of them are from community members, and only two of them were reported to be from Bear County Jail. And this brings the total in Bear County to 1,835 people who have tested positive for, fo for COVID-19. And there are some new deaths to report two deaths, a man in his 60s and a woman in her 50s, bringing Bear County's death toll up to 56. But there is good news to report. So many of those diagnosed with a respiratory disease caused by the virus have recovered. At this moment in Bear County, there are more people that have recovered from the virus than active cases. A total of 927 people or 51% have made a full recovery. Mayor Ron Nierberg referred to this as a major milestone. This was during last night's daily briefing. And just so you know, he is cautioning younger people to continue to take this virus very seriously out of all the act out of all the cases, those 1,835 cases, 45% of them were related to people younger than 40 years old. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also involving the coronavirus this morning, the only hospital in Del Rio located on the border has been testing patients and taking extra measures to keep everyone safe. Valverde Regional Medical Center has been testing patients from surrounding counties since March 13th. They have tested a total of 366 patients and out of those, only 11 have tested positive. Every day, the hospital CEO speaks with city and county leaders to discuss supplies and any issues that may arise. We do an update and we talk about our, our PPE. We talk about um, our supplies, how many days, hand on plot, on, days on hand we have of gloves, masks, shields, um, any issues uh, we've had at our screenings for patients and for our employees. Now, if someone shows up in the emergency room, presents symptoms of COVID-19, they are taken to a negative pressure room and then tested. Here in Texas, we are in the second phase of reopening the state. For the first time in more than six weeks, hair salons and barbershops were able to open for business. Now, our KSET team visited Pure Posh Salon and VIP Nails and Spa to see what precautions they were taking to keep customers safe. Now, the state only recommends mask and social distancing in its guideline for salons. However, both locations are also using protective barriers and hand sanitizer to keep customers safe. Look at this place right now. There's no magazines. There's no, you know, there's nothing really to touch. You just stand. So I feel like they've taken all the precautions they can do. 
Now, the state also recommends both employees and customers be screened before showing up to the businesses. Meanwhile, all equipment must be cleaned and disinfected after each use. Stylists are also encouraged to schedule appointments and limit extra people in the shop. And we are also tracking the impact of COVID-19 around the country. The death toll now above 77,000 in this country and climbing. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details for us. A second case of COVID-19 now linked to the White House. Vice President Pence's press secretary, Katie Miller, who's married to one of President Trump's closest advisors, Stephen Miller, testing positive. She's a wonderful young woman, uh, Katie. She tested uh, very good for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden today she tested positive. Uh, she hasn't come into contact with me. This coming just one day after word of one of the president's personal valets, a military member who serves his food, tested positive as well. The president Friday commemorating the end of World War II, not wearing a mask, kept at a distance, were veterans in their 90s. Did you consider wearing a mask when you were with them, given their... No, that because I was very far away. As the number of cases climbs across the country, some doctors say remdesivir, the only drug authorized by the FDA for emergency treatment of COVID-19 symptoms, is scarce and not getting to the hospitals that need it most. It's very concerning, and it really is... Uh, in the midst of an epidemic, you wish we would have the drug available. And another major concern for doctors, seeing a possible link between COVID-19 and a rare inflammatory illness attacking children. What we are seeing, though, is that they have antibodies to corona, which means they had a previous infection with the coronavirus maybe two, three weeks ago, and they may have been asymptomatic, never known about it. Um, but now we're seeing it's the body's reaction to that virus. Dozens of cases reported and several children, including a five-year-old in New York City, who possibly had the syndrome dying. This is every parent's nightmare, right? The coronavirus pandemic also continuing to take a devastating toll on Americans financially. Long lines at food banks across the country with the unemployment rate now the worst since the Great Depression. More than 20 million people losing their jobs in just the past month. Many of them still unable to get unemployment benefits. Probably 95 percent of the time you're calling, you're not getting to speak with anyone at all. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And you this morning, one man remains in critical condition after police day. He was shot about half a dozen times. Now, it happened just after 1.30 this morning at the Carrion Convenience Store on Northwest Loop 410. Police say a man walked into that store and began to fight with people inside. And that's when one of the people pulled a gun and shot that man several times. The victim was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. The man who fired the shots was taken into custody. Charges are pending. It is now 608 and 64 degrees. A local market with plenty of meat in stock, but at a rising cost. Still ahead on GMSA, why the coronavirus has meat packing plants putting the kink in some supply chains. Plus a pair of Air Jordan 1s going up for sale. Coming up next, how much the shoes worn and signed by Jordan himself are being sold for. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is a nice and humid free morning for right now. I'm enjoying it. We're going to check in with Sarah Spidey after the break to see what we can expect for the rest of your weekend. Well, welcome back 611. Shoe collectors digging deep into their wallets. That's because these signature Air Jordans from 1985 are up for auction. Not only are the Nike Air Jordan 1 shoes autographed by Michael Jordan, but he actually wore them in Chicago Bulls games. They hit the auction block this weekend where they are expected to sell for about $150,000. The mid-top sneakers were made exclusively for Jordan, so this pair varies slightly from the version able, available to the public. I wonder, so I was watching a little bit of the Michael Jordan uh, series, I guess. The His, Last Dance. He, yes, The Last Dance. There was one game where he wore the brand new pair. I don't know if it was this one, and his, his was, feet were bleeding. His feet were bleeding because <laughs> the shoes had developed so much since the time he signed the right. contract with Nike and got his first pair all the way up till 1998 when he played in that last series. Yeah. Yeah, but he didn't want to take his them off because he was playing a good game. <laughs> he said he took them, he said he took the shoes off and it's like his soap 
His socks are all soaked in blood. <laughs> he that's that's he's commitment. Tough. That he's is tough. commitment yeah. to the game. So. Well, today will be a beautiful day. Uh, and, in fact, this entire weekend will be beautiful, just like Mom for Mother's Day. Uh, we're looking outside right now, though, and we will see a little bit more clouds than sun today, especially during the first part of the day. But temperatures will be comfortable. In fact, you step outside right now, and it's nice and cool out there. We're in the 60s around San Antonio with low humidity, so it feels great outside. Uh, but again, here's a look at the satellite and you can see uh, clouds moving in from the south and from the east. So we're going to see these clouds stick around through a good portion of the morning hours, but we will see some sun in the afternoon. Again, a blanket of cloud cover around San Antonio at the moment. Temperatures, however, are quite comfortable. Speaking of comfortable, up in comfort, it's 55 degrees right now. 57 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 64 at the airport, 63 JBSA Randolph, 59 in Tarpley, 52 in Lost Maples in a wider view here. You can see it's 52 in Carrizo, uh, in uh, Rock Springs, rather 63 in Carrizo Springs. It's a little cooler in the Hill Country, 64 out in Del Rio. Now for our uh, coastal communities, there were some showers earlier this morning, some thunderstorms pushing down toward Corpus Christi, but these are going to stay well to our south today. These thunderstorms are developing along that front that moved through yesterday. That's been giving us the pleasant low humidity. Uh, take a look out toward New England, though. Snowfall in New England in the middle of May. So this is a pretty potent system, especially when we turn on uh, the temperature. As you can see, it's freezing in Chicago, freezing in Cleveland and in Cincinnati. Uh, even though those areas are used to the freezing cold, this is a little late in the season to be getting uh, these freezing temperatures. So they're cold this morning and we're benefiting from the cooler weather here in San Antonio. It's only 43 degrees up in Lubbock, though. Let's take a look through the future cast and you can see what I mean. These clouds are going to be a little stubborn today hanging on just a little bit but by the afternoon we should see peaks of sunshine and will be partly cloudy uh, by dinner time and so temperatures will reflect that we're not going to warm up too much today with that northeast breeze and uh, some of those clouds sticking around so we'll only be at 80 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio very nice weather low humidity up in the hill country Kerrville only 75 even out toward Del Rio where they've been dealing with triple digit weather uh, at times in the last couple of weeks only going to be at 81 degrees this afternoon out toward Del Rio Laredo only at 77. So it's going to be a beautiful day not only for us here in San Antonio but across South Central Texas. We'll just have to deal with these morning clouds still in the 60s by 10 pleasant around the lunch hour 70 degrees low humidity in the afternoon and pleasantly warm to 80 degrees northeast winds 10 to 15 and then a cool and crisp evening. So if you want to spend some time in the backyard or out on the patio today's a good day to do it. It. Tomorrow, don't forget Mother's Day. So here's a look at your Mother's Day forecast uh, for your Sunday. It's going to be another nice day. We'll wake up near 58 in the morning hours, right around noon, 75 and sunny. And in the afternoon, 83 and sunny, low humidity tomorrow as well. In fact, we'll have low humidity through Monday, but on Tuesday, we start to see the humidity work its way back into play. And on Tuesday, that's our chance for some storms in this upcoming week. 40% chance for scattered storms. We don't get back into the 90s, however, until the end of the week. By then, it'll be humid again. So enjoy the low humidity. David, Stephanie. So I you gave your it. mother a Mother's Day card with a forecast in it. Well, Aww. I'm like saying that, that that's, what, that's what kids will do, probably. <laughs> I like, okay. I like it. It was nice. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. 616 and 64 degrees. And paying tribute to health care workers in San Antonio from the skies. Just ahead when you can watch the Thunderbirds fly over the Alamo City. Plus, beef supplies are increasing demand. Why one local market is having to hike the prices several times a week. And taking a look at your winning lottery numbers, 4500, Fireball 6, 9848, Fireball 4. And you catch 5, is 13, 25, 26, 29, 31. And then Mega Million. 5, 20, 22, 61, 70. Mega Balls 4, Mega Flyer is 2. Good luck. And welcome back. It is 620. So burgers to New York strips. You can expect to pay a lot more than just two months ago. It all has to do with the temporary closures and slowdowns at some meatpacking plants, putting a big kink in some supply chains. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris takes us to a local meat market where they have plenty of beef, but at a rising cost. 
What else can I get you for? At Theatrix Meat Market, they're seeing more customers with an appetite for beef. The traffic has been almost double or triple than what we're used to on a given weekday. Concerns about beef supplies are upping demand. Carter Ray says their family business is fortunate they buy about half from local ranchers and process it themselves. It's the other half from suppliers that's costing him 30 to 40 percent more and rising. In particular, especially going into Memorial Day weekend with demand, briskets is about 80 to 90 percent um, higher than it was about eight weeks ago. The USDA says beef production is down 35 percent and that's driving up prices. So expect to pay more for your brisket and burgers. What we really have are tighter supplies and when we have tighter supplies, price goes up. Agriculture economist David Anderson says shoppers can expect to see higher meat prices at the grocery store and fewer choices at Viatrix. I've already changed pricing twice this week um, just to stay on top of it and it's it's a bummer deal. His lean ground beef that was $3.99 a pound is now $5.29 a pound. And the choice Angus T-bones jumped from $10.99 a pound to now $14.79 a pound. Necessary, he says, and temporary. As more packing plants get back to work, suppliers expect more stability in about a month. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Hopefully we're moving into better days. Uh, I like that one. 622. <laughs> it's early. Yeah. 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. Six high performance aircraft flying in precise formation when the Thunderbirds are expected to pay tribute to our healthcare workers on the front lines of the coronavirus. If you're looking for something to do with the family next week that's very entertaining and pretty impressive, the U.S. Air Force has you covered. That's because you can see the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds flying over San Antonio next week as part of Operation America Strong. Simply awesome. The mission is to honor the health care workers on the front line of COVID-19. The flyover in San Antonio will be Tuesday, May 12th at 1.20 in the afternoon, and the flight's going to last about 30 minutes. Residents along the flight path will see six high-performance aircraft flying in precise formation. For more details, you can head to our website at KSA.com. That's that will be nice. Oh, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing that yes. and to honor all those people on the front line who are putting their lives on the line. Yes, thank you. Great tribute. Very much so. 626, 64 degrees. And a local bakery doing what they can to weather the coronavirus storm still ahead. David Elder gives us a sneak peek of how in today's Texas East. And speaking of restaurants, it's been on one of the worst years for businesses around the country. We'll have the details coming up after the break. Good morning. It is 6.30. It is Saturday. It is May 9th. Happy Mother's Day weekend. And we have nice weather. What a, what a nice gift. <laughs> yeah. We, we're looking forward to this all weekend. We've been talking about it since Monday, how great this weekend's going to be. What it is coffee chilly. Cup? What, yeah, okay. What is that? I'm showing you my coffee cup because okay. it's chilly outside. And I actually wanted my coffee warm this morning because it's a little cool. So, And this coffee cup says I'm a catacorn on it. Aww. It has a cat unicorn on it. That's cute. My little girl loves uh, like panda corns, catacorns. <laughs> <laughs> They're super cute. All oh, those made up animals. So well, the weather's not going to be made up today. In fact, it'll be really beautiful outside. But we do have clouds to start off our day. Cloud cover around San Antonio. Uh, mainly it's high thin cirrus clouds right now. Uh, but we are starting to see some of those mid-level clouds work their way in. So we've got a blanket of cloud cover. Uh, that's going to be a little difficult to shake as we head into the mid-morning hours. But we should still see a decent mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon. Temperatures this morning, like I said, a little on the cool side. It's especially noticeable because the humidity is low. It's 55 in Comfort, 51 in Kerrville, 56 in Bandera. Meanwhile, 61 Rio Medina, 64 at the airport in San Antonio, where we get our official reading for temperatures. 60 in Bolverde and 60 in Canyon Lake. A wider view. It's nice and cool out toward Del Rio, too, and Del Rio could use it because because 
For a few days last week, they were pushing 104, so no thank you. Now, Mother's Day weekend is going to look great. We will have low humidity today. It will be a bit cloudy and we'll reach about 80 degrees in the afternoon. Take a look at the start of the day tomorrow in the upper 50s. It's going to be beautiful. Low humidity tomorrow for Mother's Day as well, but a lot of sun for mom tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies and a high near 83 degrees. I know a lot of us are cooped up inside, but today's going to be a great day to sit out on the patio and enjoy the nice weather or take a walk in the neighborhood. However, we do have a potential for rain in the upcoming week. I'll be back to talk about that in just a few minutes. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man who was shot in the leg is not cooperating with police at this time. Now, police responded to a call in the 7200 block of Dwarf Palm and found a man with a gunshot wound to the leg. He told police that he went home after he was shot at a convenience store. He was taken to Bamsey, where he remains in stable condition. Police say he was uncooperative during questioning. The number of new positive COVID-19 cases and deaths continue to increase in our region, but there's also some good news city and county leaders shared during Friday's daily briefing. According to Mayor Ron Nirenberg, there are more people that have recovered from the virus than there are active cases. Our Alicia Bedetta joins us live with more details. Good morning. Well, Mayor Ron Nirenberg referred to this as a major milestone, and here's why. 51% of the people who have been affected by this respiratory disease have made a full recovery. So here's what that number means. 1,835. That's the total number of cases in Bear County. Of those, 927 people have made that full recovery and are now doing much better. And although this is good news, of those total cases, Mayor Ron Nirenberg pointed out that 45% of them are related to people under 40 years old. So this is why he cautioned younger people to really, really take COVID-19 seriously. There are new cases to report in the region, 30 new cases in Bear County, and of those, 24 are from the community. Only two cases were reported from Bear County Jail. And unfortunately, two new deaths were also reported. A man in his 60s and a woman in her 50s. These unfortunate losses bring Bear County's death toll to 56. And although so many have recovered, others continue to fight to get through this disease. And we know that right now, 63 patients are in hospitals, 33 are in ICU, and 21 are on ventilators. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Alicia. Alicia, once again, mentioned those numbers from the jail. To review those real quick for you, according to the city's update, of the 30 new cases reported, county jail only had two. This includes an inmate and staff member. That brings the total cases to 295 inmates and 51 staff. 49 of those have recovered, and more than 800 have been tested at the jail. A CPS Energy employee who tested positive for COVID-19 is recovering at home. Now, CPS Energy stated in a press release that they found out on Thursday, which was the same day the employee was tested. Now, the employee last reported to a CPS Energy facility more than 14 days ago and that the employee doesn't interact with customers. So since late March, about 1,200 employees at CPS Energy's workforce are working remotely. And let's take a look at the cases of COVID-19 in our surrounding counties. Hayes County has four new cases, bringing that total to 203. Guadalupe County also adding three new cases, bringing their total to 93. We're also tracking these numbers on our website at kset.com. And back here, Eat Home, the two pop-up COVID testing sites in San Antonio will continue to operate today. The testing sites are available for people with symptoms and those asymptomatic. The two locations are at Los Palmos Library and Woodlawn Lake Park. They will be open Saturday from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. Once again, today from 10 till 5. There is no cost to get tested and you don't have to make an appointment. Both sites are only giving out 300 tests, though. And River Parks and New Braunfels are reopening this weekend, but with new restrictions. If you chose to go out, you must maintain social distancing while out along the Kamal River. Now, Prince Psalms Park, Hinman Island, and the City Tube Chute are open, but with limited hours of operation. River Outfitters are also required to follow Governor Greg Abbott's guidelines to continue operating. New Braunfels Mayor Baron Castile 
tells us that he's aware that businesses along the river have been impacted. Their plan is to get back to everyday life in the safest way possible. And we're trying our best to tr bring back some sense of normalcy, but within the guidelines that the governor is, re is requiring of our businesses as well as our municipalities. River parks will be open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. More parks along the Guadalupe River are expected to open today. South of San Antonio, a Texas beef processing plant announced it will begin testing all of its employees for COVID-19 today. The STX beef plant has about 400 employees. Seven tested positive for the coronavirus. Six of them are in the hospital. The company says it's not shutting down the facility because they're an essential business. They do plan to test all of their workers over the next few days. In your morning headlines, the National Restaurant Association saying they have lost three decades worth of jobs in just the last two months. The nation's eating and drinking establishments lost more than 5.5 million jobs in April. Restaurant employment has fallen to its lowest level since 1989 because of the pandemic. On top of that, the national unemployment rate hovering near 15% and climbing. The national restaurant industry now asking Congress for targeted relief for its industry and employees. Also in your morning headlines, another sporting event has been disrupted by the pandemic. This time it's the UFC match. The UFC announced that Ronald Jakar Souza will not be on Saturday's UFC 249 card because of the positive COVID-19 test. Souza was slated to fight Uriah Hall in a middleweight bout in Jacksonville, Florida. In addition, Souza's two corner men also have tested positive for COVID-19. All of them were said to be wearing personal protective gear and self-isolating when possible. The UFC says the pay-per-view event will move forward without Souza on the card. Spurs guard Patty Mills is asking San Antonians to purchase coffee in support of domestic violence victims. In the spirit of Mother's Day this Sunday, Patty is asking us to order coffee, food, and merchandise from eight participating local coffee shops for curbside pickup only. Mills will then write a check to Family Violence Prevention Services, his preferred charity, doubling the sales of all eight coffee shops on that day. Patty doesn't want domestic violence to be overlooked during the COVID-19 pandemic. And all eight participating coffee shops will be open from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. with curbside pickup only. So some of those restaurants, right? Th excuse me, coffee shops right there. Mild Fire Coffee, Press Coffee Theory, Indie Coffee, Brown Coffee Estate, Scorpion and Gold. So support your local coffee shops. He's always doing something he to help is, people out. He has Love stepped that. up yes. during this during this pandemic, really has with a lot of different ideas, a lot of different things. And it's nice to see him, you know, come on the, uh, I guess it was a Zoom interview yes. yesterday. Yes. So uh -huh. it's nice to see him out there. It really so, is. And then, you know, doing stuff for the community as well. But yeah. uh, that's why people love Patty Mills. Yes, thank you, Patty. 640, 64 degrees. And it's hard, but learning how to live after death, coming up dealing with the pain, could impact you and your children for the rest of your lives. Plus, adapting to the effects of the coronavirus. Coming up next, how this local bakery is keeping their business going amid the pandemic. And taking a look outside with live cam, what a beautiful Mother's Day gift to have this weather. 64 degrees, very nice. We're going to check in with Sarah so she can tell us what we can expect the rest of the day and for Mother's Day tomorrow. We'll be right back. Joining us here is Alexia Nadler, Operations Manager over here at Nadler's. And thank you so much for having us out here today. I know it's a weird time of the world right now. It's, it's a lot of things going on, a lot of adjustments having to be made, especially by bakeries, delis, restaurants, things like that. Yeah. So how has this experience been for y'all? What adjustments have you had to make? Well, we've had to make quite a bit of adjustments. Um, we're selling things we never sold before. Maybe it'll something we'll keep doing, I don't know. But business has slowed down, but we're still trucking. People are still wanting cakes. And has this impacted you to the point where you've had to do any kind of drastic, you know, measures to keep the doors open? We've cut our hours, unfortunately, but at least the days are still there. And uh, we have cut, we haven't cut staffing, we've just reduced hours. Yeah, but we've, 
we're making casseroles. We're doing um, some D DIY kits for people to do at home for Easter, birthdays, just because. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So it's made us very creative in a very short amount of time. Well, welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. We are seeing some clouds uh, work their way in this morning uh, on the time lapse, and these clouds are going to be just a touch stubborn. We'll be able to get rid of them by the uh, probably mid morning hours, but you can see that right there as we're starting to see the first uh, light of the day with the sunrise there. So we've got some mid and high level clouds working their way in. There were, were some areas of rain south of Highway 90 this morning, but as you can see, that is all pushed on down to the coastal plain uh, near Beaver and Corpus Christi here in San Antonio. We will be rain free and we will be nice and dry at the surface. Take a look at these dew points in the 40s. That's really pleasant weather, so low humidity today, but these clouds that are around this morning are really going to prevent our temperatures from warming up too much. In fact, this morning you'll step outside and you'll notice it's a bit cool outside, not chilly, but definitely cool and comfortable. 64 at the airport in San Antonio, but look up toward Kerrville, 51 degrees in Kerrville, 50 in Rock Springs, 49 in Junction, cooler in the higher elevations, uh, but elsewhere we're seeing temperatures this morning in the mid 60s, 64 in Del Rio and 63 in Carrizo Springs. A wider view here. We did have a front that moved through yesterday, and that's why we're uh, pleasantly cool with low humidity this morning, but up toward uh, the Panhandle of Texas, 41 degrees in Amarillo this morning, 43 in Lubbock. It's even cool of 54 degrees in Dallas, Fort Worth. Let's take you through the planning forecast. What you'll notice in the future cast is that these clouds, like I said, are going to hang around through uh, the mid morning and even potentially into the lunch hour. But we will see clearing in the afternoon, a good mix of sun and clouds and highs today are going to be very pleasant. Look at these potential high temperatures, 75 for the high in Bernie, 77 in Leon Springs, 70 77 in La Soya, 77 in Lake Hills, all of us right around 80 degrees around the Alamo City this afternoon. So it's going to be a very pleasant Saturday, albeit a little bit on the cloudy side. Low humidity is going to feel great. Northeast winds at 10 to 15, so not as breezy and gusty as last night. Last night we were seeing wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. Today those winds will be calmer northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Reminder, cool start in the the morning hours will be at 58 with low humidity. So if you or mom are a runner, make sure to go outside and walk and run tomorrow morning because it'll feel great. Sunny, more sunny tomorrow than today. Low humidity, 83 for the high. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and a pleasantly cool evening as well. And then our focus is going to shift onto a chance for rain in the upcoming week. Right now we're looking at Tuesday being the best chance for scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder as well on Tuesday. But we'll have to refine that forecast as we get closer to it. It's been a very dry start to May and May is one of our rainiest months of the year with more than four inches of rain on average for the month of May. So we need the rain. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of it on Tuesday. Until then, it's going to be pleasantly dry outside. Low humidity through Monday. Humidity returns on Tuesday with the potential for rain. And then by the end of the week, it'll just be humid and hot. Typical Texas weather. Stephanie, David. I like that idea. Mother's Day run. <laughs> in the morning hours. Yes. Some of us will be sleeping in those, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. It's 648 and 64 degrees. And dealing with death just ahead, how you can learn to live again after losing someone with a little help from your friends. And welcome back at 651. Whether it's from an unexpected virus sweeping across the world or losing a battle against a long-term illness, most of us have felt the pain of losing someone close to us. But how you deal with the pain could impact you and your children for the rest of your lives. Our Max Massey introduces you to a group that's helping to heal hearts. Sarah was everything that I wanted in a partner. She found a tumor when she was eight months pregnant. Sergio Mendoza, now a single father, lost his wife three years ago. His sister died from cancer just a year later. I think it's a lot to handle for a lifetime. 
Both Sergio and his son found comfort at the Children's Bereavement Center. You just really want to try to make your child feel as normal and as comfortable as possible. Psychologist Mindy Cassell co-founded CBC 21 years ago. The impact of loss is very individual. Being with others who have a loss is being with people who get it. That's what helped Jess Taffel. My dad was my best friend. He was building a, a tree house for the kids. He drilled a screw through his thumb. His lungs shut down and it was through a, a staph infection, probably caused by the wound. Initially, it was the free pizza that lured then 11-year-old Jess to CBC. But something else kept her coming back. It was a great place to be with people my own age who were going through the same things, whereas in places like school, it was very obvious that people were uncomfortable. The sessions are held in schools for kids as young as five, teens, adults, and caregivers. Research shows that group support is the most important factor in someone having healthy grief. Up here is do like a lot of arts and crafts. Anybody like shoes? Every day we meet someone who it's, the, it's their worst day. But every day we also see people get stronger, start loving themselves more. Oh, yeah. They say don't try to Thank shield your God child from the much. truth. You give it to them early on before somebody else does. And you don't have to get over it or move on. That person could continue to inspire them. Loss is a part of life and knowing that we can survive it, but not only survive it, we could thrive after. And that makes a big difference. And I didn't have to be sad all the time that I could have a happy life. Healing yourself and helping others heal as well. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. The groups are free and open to anyone. There are now 10 centers, including the latest one in Parkland, Florida, where the mass school shooting claimed the lives of 17 people. CBC also provides seminars throughout the country. And since its inception, the Children's Bereavement Center has trained more than 10,000 professionals in helping others deal with grief. It costs $2 million to run the center, and all of that money is raised through donations. It is now 654 and 64 degrees. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, pretty quiet in that shot. A little bit of movement there on 35 if you're headed out maybe to get a Mother's Day present or maybe uh, get a haircut. I don't know. Either way, just be careful out in the roads. We'll be right back. Bear County reaches a major milestone in relation to recovery cases. That's according to Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Right now in Bear County, there are more people that have made a full recovery from the respiratory disease caused by the virus than there are active cases. Of the total 1,835 cases, 927 people, or 51%, have made a full recovery. Nirenberg cautioned younger people to really Really take COVID-19 seriously as 45% of the total local cases are related to people under 40 years old. And there are new cases to report. There's a total of 30 new cases. Of those, we know 24 are from within the community and two are from Bear County Jail. Unfortunately, there are two new deaths in our area, a man in his 60s and a woman in her 50s. That brings Bear County's death toll up to 56. And Although many have recovered from COVID-19, there are still plenty of people that are fighting to get through it. We know that more than 60 people are in the hospital right now, 33 are in ICU, and more than 20 are on ventilators. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, you can see that clouds are out there right now to start off our Saturday, but temperatures are pretty pleasant. It's in the 60s outside right now, and we'll stay in the 60s through about noon, and we'll have low humidity in the afternoon, some sunshine, northeast wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mother's Day weekend looks great. Uh, more sunny tomorrow than today, 83 degrees for the afternoon high tomorrow, uh, and again, low humidity all weekend long. We'll have low humidity through Monday, but it'll be humid again on Tuesday when we expect a few scattered storms in the area. And then we'll be warm and humid to end the week. Highs back into the 90s by Thursday and Friday. So weather's going to be great this weekend, guys. That's the summary. <laughs> I will enjoy that. Thank you, A lot Sarah. better than those 97s we had around. Oh, Most yes. definitely. Too early for that. <laughs> All right. See you at 8. Yeah, see you in an hour. Live from Chase at 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We've got the latest on that plane that went off the runway at the San Antonio International Airport last night. What the pilot says caused that incident. A man shot in the stomach and now police are looking for the person responsible. And here's a live look outside with live cam. What a beautiful morning, a little cloudy, but it's gonna be a great Mother's Day weekend. We'll give mother the whole weekend. Oh, weekend. right. I, I, think I think she pretty much deserves it. <laughs> yes, I think so too. <laughs> Good morning, it is 8 a.m. I'm David Sears. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. Yes, happy Mother's Day weekend. Happy Saturday and nice weather, you're and right. What moms have been dealing with over the last couple of months, trying to help their kids yes. with school and keep the family together and everything. They deserve, they probably deserve a whole month after this is all over. I think so. We'll give them the weekend for now. So happy Mother's Day on this weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, isn't it, Sarah? That's exactly right, David. It is a little cloudy outside right now, and we will have to deal with the clouds for a good portion of the day today. But the key today, low humidity and comfortable temps. So we can deal with a little bit of cloud cover, but even better for Mother's Day. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with live cam. You can see those morning clouds, but notice the sun is starting to peek through those clouds, so we are going to have a pretty nice day here. 64 degrees outside, dew point in the 40s, so we've got low humidity. Winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour behind a front that we saw move through yesterday. Waking up in the hill country, though, this morning, it is much cooler. 54 degrees in Kerrville, 56 in Comfort and in Bandera, 52 out toward Los Maples, 63 at JBSA Randolph, 66 in Castroville, and 64 in Pleasanton. Wider view here Del Rio only 63 degrees this morning. Welcome change out toward Del Rio where they've been dealing with summertime heat during the past week. Now looking ahead to the day, if you want to take the dog for a walk, it's going to be a perfect day to do so. In fact, you got the green paw every hour of the day today because we'll have uh, partly cloudy skies into the afternoon, 80 degrees and uh, mostly clear skies uh, during the evening hours. But those clouds will hang on through the first part of the day here. But Big event in the weekend, Mother's Day. I'll tell, take a look ahead toward Mother's Day. A lot more sunshine in the forecast, but rain also in the forecast at some point in the upcoming week. Lots to talk about. Forecast coming soon. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police are looking for the person responsible for shooting a man in the stomach. Now, it happened right after one this morning at a home in the 1000 block of South Hamilton Avenue. According to police, two men got into an argument and ended up with one person getting shot. Now, police say the man who shot that other man fled the scene, and the victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Witnesses from inside that house say the victim and the suspect knew each other well. And now to the latest on an incident that happened late last night, according to San Antonio International Airport Police, a pilot flying a twin-engine turboprop plane had trouble with the landing gear as he approached the runway. It happened just before 10.30. Airport police say the plane landed on its belly, sliding off the runway before coming to a stop. Fortunately, the pilot was not injured, and he was the only person on the plane. As we showed you live on KSA 12 News at 10 last night, we were able to find out from sources that this was a cargo plane owned by a company based in Dallas. And according to the mayor's briefing, 51% of COVID-19 patients in Bear County have recovered, with the exact number being 927, but let's break down the numbers. There are a total of 1,835 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. That's an increase of 30 cases since Thursday. There are 63 people hospitalized and 33 are in the ICU, so 21 patients are on ventilators. There are 56 deaths in total reported. Also from yesterday afternoon's briefing, the latest numbers for the Bear County Jail. According to the city's update, from those 30 new cases reported in the county, two are from the jail. This includes an inmate and a staff member. That brings the total cases to 295 inmates and 51 staff. 49 of those have recovered. More than 800 people have been tested at the jail. A CPS Energy employee who tested positive for COVID-19 now recovering at home. There was a press release sent out yesterday that said that CPS Energy found out about it on Thursday, which was the same day the employee was tested. The employee last reported to a CPS Energy facility more than 14 days ago. The employee doesn't interact with customers. That's what they're saying. Now, since late March, about 1,200 employees at CPS Energy's workforce are working remotely. Two pop-up COVID-19 testing sites in San Antonio will continue to operate today. The testing sites are available for people with symptoms and those without symptoms. 
Now the two locations are at Las Palmas Library and Woodlawn Lake Park. They will be open Saturday, that's today, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There is no cost to get tested and you don't have to have an appointment. Both sites are only giving out 300 tests though. And while many have been deeply impacted by COVID-19, some families have seen devastating results, loss of jobs and fear of not being able to put food on the table. And that's why Resurrection Church wanted to help and step in. They partnered with the San Antonio Food Bank and New Braunfels Food Banks to collect donations that those in need can benefit from. Alicia Barrera is live from the food drive with more on today's collection. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. The food drive hasn't started just yet, but I want to tell you why this was so necessary for the church to plan. The pastor, Ray D. Brown, wanted to partner with both San Antonio Food Bank and New Braunfels Food Bank to make sure that they could reach as many people as possible and help. So this food drive starts at 9 a.m., which means that you back at home have time to collect some of those non-perishable food items that you may have in your pantry and bring them this way. These food drives will happen simultaneously today. It starts at 9 a.m., runs until 11 a.m. If that's too early for you, there is a second shift this afternoon. That's from 2 to 4 p.m. The closest location here to us, uh, we're on 281 in Loop 1604 East. That's the Resurrection Church Redland Oaks campus off of Jones Maltzberger. This food drive is in partnership with the San Antonio Food Bank. Another option is for those in the Shirts area. Resurrection Church Shirts campus is located on East Live Oak Road and they'll also be collecting food items again 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then again 2 to 4 p.m. and this is the second round for the food drive for this church. The first time they did this, they were able to fill 43 barrels and we did the math, 5,800 pounds. So the goal for today, again, collectively, between New Braunfels and the San Antonio location is going to hope to double that. So we'll see how that turns out this morning. And we'll be live here all morning long from the Red Oaks campus of Resurrection Church. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. I think they'll meet their goal. Hope so. It's 807, it's 64 degrees. And it was Teacher Appreciation Week, and even though students are not in classrooms right now, they're still celebrating their teachers. We're gonna show you how. And getting Santa in shape. That's what Betty White <laughs> will be doing in a new Christmas Lifetime movie. We've got the details next on GMSA. That sounds cute. Be interesting to watch. Taking a look outside with Live to Ham. Beautiful shot there of downtown San Antonio. We are happy it is 64 degrees. I'm going to enjoy that nice cool weather all we can. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 810. The Miss America pageant being delayed. Now the Miss America organization said this year's competition is being delayed due to the pandemic. They say it's a move to protect the health and welfare of the contestants, judges and the fans. The postponement means the current Miss America Camille Schreier will serve an extra year until she can pass a torch. The next Miss America pageant will mark its 100th anniversary. Fans of Betty White, Prince Harry and Meghan, you also may want to pay attention. 98 year old actress Betty White will star in a Christmas movie. No name for it yet, but Betty will play a woman who helps get would be Santas into shape, leaving everyone to wonder is she secretly Mrs. Claus? Then there's the third installment of Lifetime's program about Harry and Meghan. It'll be about parenthood and the challenges of being part of the royal family. I have a question. Okay. Yes. How do you get would be Santas in shape? You just feed them a lot? Like, no, uh, you, they, 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 they have to practice with the bags of toys, oh. you what, know, in and out of the sled. Or they have to practice eating cookies, <laughs> cookies and drinking and a lot of milk. Yeah. <laughs> I, we can do that. Yeah, yeah that's getting in shape. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But, you know, you can't let June, you know, no. ruin your... <laughs> that is true. That is very true. And you know what? It is a little cool this morning. Temperatures are in the 60s around San Antonio. We are seeing clouds to start off our day, but as you can see, some of those clouds are on the thin side, and so the sun is shining through at 64 degrees outside. Cloudy skies, low humidity out there, 56% humidity, north winds at about 10 miles per hour. The reason it feels really pleasant outside is because we saw a cool front move through yesterday. That allowed the humidity to go 
slow down and has started off our day. Yes, with some cloud cover. There was some areas of rain south east of San Antonio today toward the coastal plain. But as you can see on the satellite imagery, we're still dealing with overcast skies. It's just that those clouds are thin. So as we head into the afternoon, we're going to have a beautiful day with a little bit of sunshine too. So although we're starting off cloudy, it won't be cloudy all day long. It's cool out in Helotus where it's 59 degrees, 57 in Comfort, 54 in Kerrville, but 64 at the airport, 61 in Bulverde, 63 New Braunfels, 52 in Lost Maples, and 56 in Bandera. Wider view, view here, 63 in Gonzales, 65 in Beeville, out toward Del Rio where they've been dealing with triple digit heat for parts of the week last week. It's now a comfortable 63 degrees. Now on our weather setup, there's that rain that I mentioned that's currently moving off toward the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that's along a front. We've been seeing pictures all morning long coming in from New England area where they are getting snowfall in May. Very impressive to be seeing snow. And then that's still that system that moved through here. It's just we're on the tail end of that. So although they're very cold out toward parts of uh, New England and the East Coast, uh, we're sitting pretty in the 60s here in San Antonio, but it is in the 40s up in San Angelo. In our future cast, you can see that the clouds, yeah, there will be patchy clouds through about the afternoon hours and so that's going to prevent us from warming up too much with that northerly breeze but we are going to see sunshine in the afternoon and that means comfortable weather 80 degrees in san antonio for the high but look up toward the hill country only 75 out in kerrville 77 for the high in rock springs down toward laredo only 77 degrees and only 81 in del rio beautiful weather today for your saturday pleasant around the lunch hour well we'll be near 70 degrees if you want to have your lunch or your dinner out on the patio or the front yard today's going to be a great day to do that low humidity not as breezy as yesterday we'll have winds from the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour then cool and comfortable in the evening hours tomorrow is mother's day so how about a mother's day card forecast for your mother's day uh, we'll be waking up even cooler than we are this morning at 58 degrees tomorrow morning around noon 75 in the afternoon sunny and 83 degrees so a lot more sunshine for your mother's day than today and then looking ahead we're going to be nice and comfortably dry through about monday with low humidity it's on tuesday that the humidity returns and it'll be humid through the rest of the week tuesday is going to be an interesting day too because we will be looking out for the potential potential for a few scattered thunderstorms. We need the rain. May is one of our rainiest months usually on average with more than four inches of rain on average in San Antonio. We haven't seen much of any rain around San Antonio so far this month, so I'll be hoping for some some showers and storms on Tuesday. David, Stephanie. Love Thank the card. You. Yeah, I know. That's pretty cool. That was, th it, that was thoughtful. <laughs> With love, Sarah. With uh, love, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll Special. try that. Love your mom. <laughs> Special shout out to your yeah. mom. Yes. <laughs> Time now is 8.15 and 64 degrees. An invention made out of Legos. Still ahead on GMSA, what Syrian refugees have designed to fight COVID-19. And it's been since before spring break that many students last saw their teachers. That's because schools have been shut down. Well, this past week was Teachers Appreciation Week, and many students were able to see their teachers once again during car parades. We're going to show you one of them after the break. Welcome back, 819. This past week, Teachers Appreciation Week, and many students celebrated their teachers with car parades. The Teacher Appreciation Parade for Mark Twain Dual Language Academy happened on Wednesday afternoon. So that's where my little girl goes to school, and I wanted to take her, but I had to work that day. So my husband told me, hey, don't worry, I'll take her and I'll shoot some video. So when I got home, he was able to show me the parade through her eyes. Take a look. We got a long line right now with people. So this is gonna be uh, something different we have never done. Rooney's excited, I think. <laughs> Kind of last minute, mom couldn't make it. I know she's uh, working. Hi. Well, when it got there, it was even colder than I thought. Gracias, los extrañamos. My principal was there saying hi. Rudy, 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 Rudy. It was like festive. The cars were decorated, all the teacher's cars. Hi, Rudy. My other teacher from PK4. Hi, So we went to our school and say hi to everybody. I went like this. 
A teacher from kinder, she had to do a smile on her face, even though she had a mask, but it looked like she had a smile on her face. I miss you. I miss you too. It was so fun. The parade was awesome. I really want to go back to school. Mark Twain Academy, best school in San Antonio. It's English and Spanish. I need to learn more Spanish than English. I miss you, Rooney. It was fabulous. Thank you, Mark Twain. And so she enjoyed it. And I started to wonder, okay, it's a teacher appreciation parade, but I think she got almost more out of it. You know, and the students were glad to see their teachers. Hi. I think the as teachers well. appreciate it as well. Aww. And I know parents now appreciate teachers even more. Yes, we do. With having to deal with <laughs> the kids at home, trying to help them with their yes. lessons. Although I know some parents are getting some pretty good grades on geometry tests and stuff. So, right? You know, that's good. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> we're, we're learning a lot as well. So, yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you, teachers. And thank you, yeah. staff, everybody, you know, who help our so, students. We appreciate it. It's good that the kids get to see the teachers in person yes. like that. Yes. Keep that social distance, but mm -hmm. at least they know they're still there and they're excited about seeing them hopefully next year. Yeah, they were very excited. Yeah, very that's excited. Good stuff. <laughs> 822, 64 degrees. A unique sanitizer dispenser made by Syrian refugees, all in the effort to help fight the coronavirus. We have the story next on GMSA. All right, let's take a look at some birthdays today. This is Elias. Turning one year old, oh How man. cute. He is ready for a fiesta. <laughs> Hang in there, Liza. It's coming in November, we hope. I know. Hang in there. Hang in there. We're almost there. I want to wish a happy birthday to Genevieve, 10 years old. Happy birthday. Enjoy your weekend. I'm trying to look and see what kind of cake that is, but anyway, either way, it looks good delicious. A good yeah, cake, yeah. Good. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. Keep on sending your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include name, age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 826. Syrian refugees have designed an automatic hand sanitizer dispenser from Legos. The prototype created at the Innovation Lab at a refugee camp. The innovator says he built it to contribute to the global fight against coronavirus and to showcase the talent of refugees. The Lego dispenser even tells you good job after you have cleaned your hands. It's very cool. And it's official, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds will fly over San Antonio next week as part of Operation America Strong. Everybody will be outside Tuesday afternoon. The mission mm -hmm. is to honor the health care workers and all those on the front line of that COVID-19 pandemic. So the flyover is going to be here in town. It'll be Tuesday, May 12th. Mark your calendars at 1.20 in the afternoon. The flight's going to last about 30 minutes. So... Plan your day, 1.20 in the afternoon on Tuesday. It's going to be exciting. And people along the flight path will see six high-performance aircrafts flying in precise formation. For more details, you can head to our website at kset.com. And if I remember the forecast, it should be a pretty good day for some Thunderbirds flying through, right? I think so. We'll we hope. We hope. Well, yeah. they'll fly low Fing enough. They'll be under the clouds. Fingers so. crossed. Okay. Low and loud. <laughs> That'll be good. Can't wait. 827, 64 degrees. And looking for some deals online? Why? The Better Business Bureau wants you to be aware of some coupons that are out there. The details in our next half hour. And there are new concerns about coronavirus infections inside the White House with one new case confirmed. We've got the latest on that member of the White Vice President staff who's being diagnosed with coronavirus. That's coming up next half hour on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be back. If you are just waking up, your alarm went off at 831. Or maybe you woke up without an alarm. Uh, it's still 831. <laughs> we're still here. Good morning. And we're, and we're here. <laughs> Happy there Saturday. Thanks maybe for joining us. Maybe we're your alarm. Uh, well, yes. Some, some people, yeah. And they woke up just in time to see the forecast. So that's perfect. See, everything worked out. Today. And it's nice weather, right? Yeah. Beautiful weather today and tomorrow. Now today we'll hold on to the clouds a little bit longer uh, than uh, we will tomorrow when it'll be totally sunny, but it's still going to be nice with low humidity. Let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery. You can see that clouds 
are blanketing the Alamo City right now, especially uh, to the south and east of I-35. We'll zoom in to Bear County here. We've got a thin layer of clouds ahead, but out toward Dehennis and out toward Hondo, you can see a little bit more sunshine out there. And so we are going to see a good mix of sun and clouds into the afternoon. Today's going to be a great day to head out to the patio, uh, sit down, have a cup of coffee outside because it's in the 60s right now. It's 64 degrees in San Antonio. We'll hang on to these morning clouds, but right around noon will be mostly sunny. It'll be pleasant near 70 low humidity today. 80 degrees northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It'll be nice to have the cooler day here for your Saturday. And of course, it is Mother's Day weekend tomorrow morning, waking up near 58. A lot more sunshine for your Sunday, but it will still have that low humidity. 83 for the high on Mother's Day, but we do have the potential for some storms in the forecast, so I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. The number of coronavirus cases around the world nearing 4 million this morning. Here in the U.S., more than a million confirmed cases, more than 77,000 deaths. The FDA has just authorized the first at-home diagnostic test, allowing people to collect a saliva sample to send into a lab for testing. So let's start with the White House, though. ABC's Rachel Scott has the latest on the member of the vice president's staff who has been diagnosed with coronavirus. This morning, the White House is stepping up its own safety measures after another confirmed coronavirus case on the complex. This time, the vice president's press secretary, Katie Miller, testing positive for COVID-19. The president announcing it publicly. She's a wonderful young woman. Uh, Katie, she tested uh, very good for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden today she tested positive. She hasn't come into contact with me. She spent some time with uh, the vice president. The news delayed the vice president's flight to Iowa. Air Force Two sitting on the tarmac as six staffers who had been in close contact with Miller deplaned. All tested negative. Miller is married to one of the president's top advisors, Stephen Miller. The White House would not say if he plans to self-quarantine as well. This is the second known coronavirus case at the White House this week. One of the president's personal valets tested positive too. That military service member is on the team that serves the president his lunch in the Oval Office. Are you worried that it's kind of already in the White House? And might well, I'm not worried. No, I'm not worried. We've taken very strong precautions at the White House, but again, we're dealing with a uh, invisible situation. Officials are increasing mitigation efforts with additional cleanings and daily tests for staff. The president's chief of staff confident about their efforts. I can tell you this is probably the safest place uh, that you can come to. None of the congressional Republicans who met with the president were seen wearing a mask. Our John Carl asked President Trump if he considered wearing one earlier that day when he honored veterans in their 90s. Given no, in that because I was very far away. Plus, the wind was blowing so hard in such a direction that if the plague ever reached them, I'd be very surprised. Meantime, back here in Texas, the state has now surpassed more than a thousand COVID-19 related deaths. There are more than 30,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases. The first death in Texas reported back on March 15th. If you compare that to other large states, Texas is better off. New York has more than 21,000 deaths and California has 2,500. Governor Greg Abbott has announced that the Texas Division of Emergency Management has applied for FEMA assistance funding to help food banks around Texas. Now, if approved, the funding will provide nearly $70 million to 21 food banks. In a statement from Governor Abbott, he says in part, quote, the state of Texas is committed to giving these organizations supplemental support during these challenging times so they can continue providing resources to those in need. A local church has partnered with the San Antonio and New Braunfels food banks to host a community food donation drive. Their goal to collect more than 6,000 pounds of non-perishable items. Our Elisa Berrera is live from Resurrection Church's Redland Oaks campus on Jones Maltzberger Road. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I had to put the face covering on because we're going to be um, learning more about how this food drive, the second food drive began. And this is, of course, the second one. The first time they did this last weekend, they were able to fill up 43 barrels. And the goal today we mentioned is doubling that. So there's a big mission ahead. There are two locations on the screen. You'll have the first location here in San Antonio. That's close to 281 and Loop 1604 East. It's, in, it's at Resurrection Church Redland Oaks Campus. 
campus right off of Jones Maltzberger. And then another option for those in the Shirts area, Resurrection Church Shirts campus is located on East Live Oak, and they'll also be collecting food items. This drive is happening 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then there's a second shift, a second two-hour shift beginning at 2 p.m. So there's options for everyone. And live with me is the coordinator himself, Minister Jack. How does this idea come about? Well, uh, first of all, we saw it on national TV. We saw that a couple of weeks back they were handing out food and me and my wife recognized it as San Antonio and it inspired us to take action. So we decided to go ahead and organize the food drive. I contacted my pastor and he opened up the door and said, whatever you want, whatever you need, let us know and make it happen. So we made it happen. And then y'all, y'all are sending that second blast all, uh, all week. And we said you're doubling the goal, 43 barrels last week. So what's the exact number of barrels y'all are hoping to fill up? We're hoping to fill up 100 barrels. Wow. Yeah, I hope 100 barrels. It equated to the last week was 5,800 pounds mm-hmm. of food. And the need is definitely there. Absolutely. The congregation has stepped up and given us a, a wonderful outpouring of, of not only donations, but several of them have volunteered to, to, to serve and, and to collect the food with me. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And again, this food drive collection happening this morning, the first shift, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then again, 2 to 4 p.m., both here in San Antonio as well as in Shirts. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Texas A&M University San Antonio Officer of Military Affairs will honor the 2020 class with a virtual Army ROTC commissioning ceremony. Now, it's going to happen next Friday, which is May 15th at 1 p.m. in the Patriots Casa Ceremony Room. It's on campus. This year's commissioning class is the largest from the whole program. This will also mark the first time A&M San Antonio Military Affairs will hold a virtual ceremony. Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Stephen Hahn is in self-quarantine after coming into contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. Now the FDA says he is complying with CDC guidelines to quarantine for two weeks. Dr. Hahn tested negative for the virus yesterday. The news comes on the same day that President Donald Trump announced Vice President Mike Pence's secretary tested positive for the virus. The case against Lori Laughlin, her husband, and a dozen others involved in the college admissions scandal is moving forward. Yesterday, a federal judge denied a motion to dismiss the charges. The motion was based on allegations by defendants that the government mishandled the investigation and failed to turn over some evidence. The judge also denied defense attorney requests to suppress calls between defendants and the scheme's mastermind, Rick Singer. The trial is still set to begin October 5th. And players on the U.S. women's national soccer team are pushing forward in their legal fight for equal pay. Yesterday, they filed a motion to appeal a California judge's dismissal of their lawsuit. The judge rejected the players' claims that the U.S. Soccer Federation paid them less than the men's national team. Now, the women also allege they face unequal working conditions when it comes to travel and that their medical and training support are not up to par with the men's team. It is 20 minutes away from 9 o'clock, 840 and 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, David Elder speaks to Richard Groomer from Groomer Seafood about how the COVID crisis has affected their business and a sneak peek of today's episode of Texas Eats. And if you're looking for some gift ideas for mom on Mother's Day, be careful. You might find some coupons that are too good to be true. Next on GMSA, we'll tell you the warnings the BBB is giving to shoppers. And taking a look outside with live cam on this Mother's Day weekend. Looking nice there downtown San Antonio, a nice 64 degrees. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a perfect gift for Mother's Day. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. In your morning consumer headlines, with many of us spending more time on social media during the pandemic, the Better Business Bureau says to watch out for scammers. Yeah, a lot of ripoff artists are using social media sites like Facebook to offer counterfeit coupons. The most frequently distributed fake coupons are for Costco, Starbucks, and Trader Joe's. The BBB, Better Business Bureau, says consumers should be skeptical and watch out if the site wants your personal information. And go ahead and try to dig deep in your wallets if you're a Michael Jordan fan. <laughs> the signature Air Jordans from 1985 up 
for auction. Not only are the Nike Air Jordan 1 shoes autographed by Michael Jordan, he also wore them in some Chicago Bulls games. They're expected to sell for upwards of $150,000 at auction this weekend. And the mid-top sneakers were made exclusively for Jordan, so this pair varies slightly from the version available to the public. And I was watching some of the docuseries, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, yeah. and I didn't realize, I, it's just my memory, I wasn't remembering right, so I thought that he signed on with Nike when he was already winning with the Bulls. He was just a rookie. He was a rookie. And yeah. he wanted to sign with Reebok. Oh, and he ended up, uh, yeah. And ended up signing, not Reebok, um, uh, Adidas. 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 And he ended up signing with Nike. I was impressed with that's the fact crazy. that he was lacing up his own tennis shoes. Uh, that's awesome. But hey, real quick, guess, <laughs> guess who, guess how they got, guess how Nike got him. This is so how? funny. They called his mom. His mom. That's awesome. <laughs> so there's that for Mother's Day. His mom made him go. Hey, yeah. Said, you moms, go. moms are important. It's Mother's Day weekend, right? <laughs> and we're going to have beautiful weather for this weekend. Uh, now, outside, this morning's time lapse does show that we have started off the day with cloud cover. Uh, you, we could see a sliver of a sunrise there on the horizon. But other than that, uh, we are still seeing some uh, clouds in the sky. We've got a mix of mid-level and high-level clouds out there. And even well south of San Antonio, we had some areas of rain down toward Beeville and Corpus Christi, but those have since pushed off into the Gulf of Mexico all along that front that moved through yesterday. That front has been bringing us beautiful dry weather. Dew points are in the 40s, my friends. That's toward the bottom of the humidity scale. Not quite chapstick weather, but it's definitely not humid outside, and that is a welcome change and will make for very pleasant conditions as we head into the heat of the day in the afternoon. Temperature this morning cool side uh, 57 in Kerrville 54 in Rock Springs at 64 here in San Antonio 63 in New Braunfels 64 in Pleasanton a pleasant 63 degrees out toward Del Rio but a wider view and you can really see how much colder it is up uh, toward the panhandle of Texas it's in the 40s in Amarillo and in Lubbock now taking a look at the planning forecast we are still going to see these clouds hang around for a good portion of the day but as we head into the afternoon we'll have a good mix of sun and clouds and that will allow for high temperatures to warm up a little bit but prevent them from warming up too much. The clouds are going to help to shield out the sun and so we'll be looking at 80 degrees around downtown San Antonio. Elsewhere highs will likely be in the upper 70s like toward New Braunfels, Seguin near 75 for the high up in Bernie and 77 in Leon Springs. A very pleasant Saturday especially when we see those peaks of sunshine into the afternoon all because of the low humidity. We'll be at 70 degrees around noon, 80 in the afternoon. Northeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it will be a little breezy at times, but not as windy as last night. Some of you could probably hear the wind howling outside last night behind that front that moved through. Looking ahead to Mother's Day, a chilly start for some people. 58 around San Antonio around about 7 o'clock, close to sunrise. Sunny and 75 around the lunch hour, and then in the afternoon, sunny with low humidity and 80. The big difference tomorrow that you'll notice is that we'll have a lot more sunshine in the forecast tomorrow than what we're seeing right now. Then looking ahead to the week, it's going to be fairly dry, except for on Tuesday. We'll have the potential for a few thunderstorms on Tuesday, so we'll have to watch out for that. Scattered thunderstorms will be possible. Other than that, low humidity through Monday, so it'll be very pleasant in the mornings and cool and comfortable in the afternoon, even though we'll have warm weather. That low humidity is going to be comfortable. Then it'll be humid again on Tuesday with that potential for a few thunderstorms, and then we're back to the same old, same old heat and humidity by Thursday and Friday. Stephanie, David? Same old, same old. Very true. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> it's 848. It's 64 degrees. And many businesses have been affected by the coronavirus. Next on GMSA, we have a sneak peek of today's episode of Texas Eats and how groomers seafood has been affected by the pandemic. Welcome back, 852. We've got a sneak peek from KSAT Texas Eats, hosted by resident foodie David Elder. That's today at 10. Yes, it's always fun to watch. And in this clip, David Elder is talking with Richard Groomer from Groomer Seafood about how the COVID crisis has affected their business. 
Seafood. With me right here is Richard Groomer, the man, the myth, president, CEO of Groomer Seafood. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And you know, talk to me about what you guys are doing in here to adjust to the current changes happening right now. I know a lot of stuff is different. Right. But how are you guys adapting to that? Well, we're right in the middle of Lent right now, which is kind of this coronavirus has kind of caught us by surprise. Uh, we're having to change a lot of things. About two thirds of the business we uh, do right now is curbside or home delivery, which was totally unexpected two months ago, but here we are. And uh, it's really gone well. It's, uh, it's a learning curve that we've kind of had to, to practice with a little bit, but we figured it out and we're doing well with it. Technically, we've become a grocery store and hard to locate items. Since one of our largest customers was Cisco Foods, we already had an inroad to uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the wholesale products that they sell on a, on a large scale. So we start bringing a lot of products such as uh, produce and eggs and milk and tortillas and just about everything else you can see, and we're selling it all now. What have you found? Has there been a change since all this has happened that people are buying a certain product more than another? People tend to be buying everything right now. There, there seems to be a unlimited budget for seafood. I don't know how much of that has to do with Lent, but uh, the average sales are, are pretty high right now, and people are just buying about everything. Of course, live crawfish season is in full bloom and effect right now, and, and we're selling, I don't know, a thousand sacks a week right now is what we're selling. So. Everybody having to make changes. A lot of fish. Yes, it is. 853, 64 degrees. And mail gets lost all the time. How would you feel if you get a postcard that was supposed to be delivered more than 30 years ago? Well, that amazing story, that's next on GMSA. A man in Iowa says he just received a postcard from his sister. But the surprising thing is that his younger sister mailed it to him from Arizona in 1987, so that's more than 32 years after she sent it. It has a photo of his older sister with the message, a picture is worth a thousand words. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> Especially here. Happy holidays after calling his sister. 76-year-old Paul Willis called his local post office. The woman he spoke to told him that many of the post offices were doing deep cleanings because of COVID-19, so they think it was just found and somebody thought enough to stick it back in the mail. Oh, I'm glad they did. As always, it's the thought that counts, right? Yes. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> A very late postcard. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, Pony Express. There you go. Yeah. That's what happens right there. <laughs> Delivering it by horseback. Yes. And coming up on GMSA, the latest on a much anticipated sports conference, what the new decision could mean for fans. Plus, a White House staffer tests positive for COVID 19, who officials say she came in contact with. A milestone involving the coronavirus right here in San Antonio. We'll break down the numbers for you coming up. Also, the king of ventilators. Why President Donald Trump has given the U.S. that nickname and what he plans to do with them. And we were going to go outside with live. There, there we go. There it is. <laughs> The anticipation was just killing us. And it's a great day to go and outside. It's a, yeah, it's a little cloudy, but it's going to be a beautiful day, beautiful weekend for mom. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. We are going to be seeing a good amount of uh, pleasant weather this weekend, a good amount of sunshine, too. Hey, David and Stephanie, how y'all doing? Hi, good hey. morning. <laughs> hey, Sarah, how you doing over there? Thanks for joining us. All right, we're going to check in with Sarah, since Sarah's already checked in with us. Yeah, I have a couple times, guys. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Weather's going to be good, though, just to let you know. So you? Uh, we're going to be seeing low humidity, good amount of sunshine, Mother's Day itself. So you can't complain. Okay, hold yeah. on. If we look this way and people at home can just kind of imagine you. There you go. There, there you are. <laughs> there it is. Uh, no, we are going to be seeing some really pleasant weather here, but it is cloudy outside right now. Uh, as we start our day, we're currently at 65 degrees uh, and we're looking at uh, cloudy skies out there right now. But don't worry, we will see some sun into the afternoon. Uh, so we're looking at 65 degrees, dew points in the 40s and 50s, so low humidity. We do have a breezy wind from the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. That's all because of the front that moved through yesterday. Yesterday, last night, you may have been woken up by the howling of the wind uh, through your windows, and the reason for that was the front that moved through. It's 58 in Bandera, cool in 
Kerrville. It's 59 degrees, 59 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 60 in Holota, 64 at JBSA Randolph, and 65 in Stenson. 55 in Rock Springs, 67 in Del Rio, and 64 in Carrizo Springs. So, nice weather today. In fact, go ahead and take the dog for the walk because we're going to have pretty comfortable conditions. It is cloudy outside right now, but it will not be humid today, and that's the key. We'll see a good mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon, 80 degrees for the high temperature. Uh, most Mostly clear skies in the evening hours, but this is a big weekend, especially for mom. It's Mother's Day weekend, so I know a lot of you are interested in what the forecast will look like for tomorrow. It looks great, I promise you. But looking ahead to the week, we do have some chances for some rain. I'll have that forecast in a few. Stephanie? Thank you, Sarah. We look forward to that. And according to the mayor's briefing, 51% of COVID-19 patients in Bear County have recovered with the exact number being 927. But let's break down the numbers. There are a total of 1,835 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. That's an increase of 30 cases since Thursday. Now there are 63 people hospitalized and 33 in the ICU. 21 patients are on ventilators. We're told there are a total of 56 deaths. Students and educators continue to be affected by COVID-19 here in Bear County. The San Antonio Independent School District has made big efforts to make sure every student has access to the internet and the technology needed to learn from a distance during the pandemic, but challenges remain. Superintendent Pedro Martinez tells us the district purchased 30,000 devices to conduct distance learning for just over 48,000 students in addition to 3,000 hotspots to provide internet access to students. But they've yet to get a hold of about 2,000 children for a variety of reasons. To hear more about this story and watch the full interview, just visit our website, ksat.com. Meanwhile, a major food donation in partnership with the San Antonio and New Braunfels food banks underway this morning. Resurrection Church is hosting a food drive in both their shirts and San Antonio locations to help families who may be struggling to put food on the table. Alicia Barrera is live from Resurrection Church's Redland Oaks campus on Jones Mallsburger Road. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Well, as you can see already, some of the people ready to donate trickling in. Thank and you. one of the cool things we see there, um, they're getting some of the volunteers. You'll notice that they have roses here. Minister Jack is with me live this morning. You mentioned that you want to make it a special time for the moms, too, because yes. of Mother's Day weekend. So tell yes. me about we the roses. Want make, we want to make it a special time because this is Mother's Day weekend. And usually during Mother's Day, people are giving their mothers flowers, going to church with their mothers, going out to dinner with their mothers. So we want to let them know, even though we're in a, uh, the COVID-19 has locked down, we still want them to have something special on this special day. And you helped coordinate, put this whole thing together, both here in San Antonio and also in New Braunfels. What's the need here in the community that you've seen? The greatest need is, is, is to get people food. I know when I watch the, um, the national feed, there were several people in that line that had never had that need before, and we were able to help fulfill that need, and God placed it on my heart to, to do something and take action. We actually have some other events planned to help those in need. And the big goal, what is the big goal for today? The big goal is to get 100 bins. 100 and, and we're bins. We're to fill 100 bins. And I want to show you all what it looks like right now. They're a little empty, and that's because it just started right now at 9 a.m. There are two locations here in San Antonio, right off of Jones and Maltzberger. The second location in shirts, those addresses should be on your screen right now. It starts at 9 a.m., so already started, goes on to 11 a.m. And because they want to make sure that the volunteers get a break, more than 50 volunteers helping make this happen. There's a second shift, 2 to 4 p.m., so there's an option for everyone. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Okay. All right, Alicia, thank you very much. In your morning headlines, the White House dealing with another case of coronavirus. Two staffers have now tested positive in just two days. Vice President Mike Pence's press secretary, Katie Miller, was one of the two who tested positive for the virus. That makes her the second person who works at the White House complex known to test positive for the virus this week, which is leading the Trump administration to step up safety protocols. She said she had been in contact with Pence recently, but not with President Donald Trump. There is no word on if her husband, Stephen Miller, who is a top advisor to Trump, has been tested or is still working in the White House. President Donald Trump now calling the U.S. the, quote, 
king of ventilators. Now this comes after the plan to ship 8,000 of the breathing machines to foreign countries by the end of July. Now that's a long way from the early days of the virus when U.S. medical workers were wondering if a shortage of ventilators would force them to decide which patients would get them. Now the U.S. has a surplus and the president is sharing them with other countries. Sports fans around the world paying close attention to a teleconference yesterday between the NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and many of the current NBA players. Silver giving an update on dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. A tape of the call obtained by ESPN. A lot of the players had questions about safety. The commissioner telling players that a decision on the season has not been made yet and may not be made until sometime in June. He said he would still like to see a full playoff postseason since there would be no fans. They would hold the playoffs in just two cities. He still wanted full best of seven rounds and even talked about having a play in tournament. He also told the players to get ready for it next season, not to start until December, and it may be played without fans as well. And finally, he revealed that 40% of the league's revenue came from game nights at arenas around the league. So they are taking a hit. By the way, several teams opened their facilities yesterday, only four players at a time and only individual workouts. The Spurs can't open their practice facility until the 18th if they even decide to let players in on that day. Okay. Well, things are moving. Oh, yeah, but at least slowly. There's news, but yeah. they're moving slow, so we'll see. Hopefully the NBA at least get some playoffs in before the season ends. Yeah, I hope so. so but yeah. we'll have to wait and see how that goes. 908, 65 degrees now. And do you have a newer model Jeep Wrangler? Uh-oh, if you do, you might want to see the latest crash ratings. We're going to have that coming up. Plus, something to do while you stay at home during the pandemic, where you can get these neat DIY sushi kits. That's pretty neat. Taking a look outside with live cam. Beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio. Thank you for joining us on this Mother's Day weekend. Remember to call your mom. Say happy Mother's Day. Give her lots of love. We'll be right back. Hi, good morning, welcome back. It is 912 and we have a sneak peek from Quesos Texas Eats hosted by resident foodie, our David Elder. That's today at 10 a.m. In this clip, David Elder visits Yellowfish Sushi where he is talking with co-owner Brenda about their DIY sushi kits to go. I was working in this location on the night that our mayor said that, you know, restaurants had to close the dining. So as um, I was talking to my brother and as we were turning off the lights, it was a very bittersweet moment because we didn't know. We still don't know when it's going to be the next time that we'll see our dining room on. Um, however, um, it's been a lot of adjustment, but since the day that we opened, day one, we've always, or we've always offered online delivery and pickup. We have an app. Uh, we were one of the first establishments here in town with our own app. So our customers are very much used to placing orders with us online. Um, for us to do and pack everything uh, to go, it's not a unusual thing for us to do. We've been doing it like that for the past seven years. So for us, that, that was not that much of a shift. Um, definitely the hardest shift would be not having to our customers here every night or every day, um, talking to them, hugging them, because they become friends. Something I just learned about David Sears. <laughs> I didn't call him out. Is that he does not like sushi. He does not like raw food. And he doesn't even like his steak pink in the middle. Oh, but but tell him what a, David said. What did you tad. say, David? Tell him. What, about the steak? Yeah, you said, I don't I, like Cal talking to me when I'm eating it. <laughs> Kill that thing. Well, okay. me, that sushi looks great, so I'm excited oh, for that. I, and I don't want fish talking to me either. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you want a, a silent dinner. That's exactly right. <laughs> hey, I David, can I? conversation. I'll have it with people, not my food. Well, can, I, can I talk to you about the weather? Yeah. Yes. Please, right. please yes. do. All right. Give We've got cloudy skies outside right now, but we will be able to see some sunshine later on today. It's 65 degrees outside, low humidity. It feels great. It's just a little gray out there, uh, but don't worry. We will see some sunshine today. In fact, on the satellite imagery, you look west of San Antonio and you can see the clearer skies out toward Yavali, Del Rio, and even in Medina County here. So we'll zoom
zoom in. The west side of Bear County starting to see some thinning in those clouds. Even Castroville right now, just a thin layer of cirrus clouds at the moment. So we will see a good mixture of sun and clouds into the afternoon. But we're starting off the day on the cool side. It's 65 degrees at the airport. It's 66 at Port SA, 64 at JBSA Randolph. A lot cooler up in the hill country. Bernie Stage Airfield, 59 degrees, 59 in Kerrville and in Bandera as well. Wider view here, it's 67 in Del Rio and even down toward Laredo, 66 degrees. Now on the weather setup, we did have some showers and storms across the coastal plain, but those have since pushed on off to the south. It is winter in May up in parts of New England in the northeastern tier of the United States. Look at that snowfall around that low pressure system. This is the same system that drug that cold front through San Antonio last night and temperatures behind this are very cold for those areas across New England. Even this time of year, 34 in Cleveland, 38 in New York. But right now here in San Antonio, we're benefiting from the cooler weather, 65 in San Antonio. Taking a look at the future cast, like I said, those clouds are going to be a mix of sun and clouds. The sky is in the afternoon, but we're still going to be able to see some sun. We'll warm up. We will. We'll be near 80 degrees this afternoon, but that is still considerably cooler than the last few days, and it'll be pleasant with that low humidity. Meanwhile, it'll only be in the 70s up in Kerrville, 75 degrees, potentially 78 in New Braunfels, even out toward Del Rio, where they've been dealing with triple digit heat at times last week, 81 for the high temperature. So today, your Saturday, it's going to be nice. We just have to hold on to those morning clouds. It'll be pleasant to right around lunch, 70 degrees, low humidity in the afternoon, 80 for the high. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and it'll be cool this evening with temperatures falling into the 60s under mostly clear skies. So a beautiful Saturday, but tomorrow is Mother's Day. Mother's Day card forecast for you, so don't forget to write mom a card or give her some flowers. Tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day because we'll see a lot more sunshine than we will today. 58 for the start of the day in the morning, so great for a crisp walk in the morning hours. Around noon, we'll be at 75, and then in the afternoon, 83 degrees for the high, but again, a lot of sunshine. The humidity will stay pleasantly low through Monday, and then on Tuesday, you'll notice the humidity returning, and by the weekend, it'll just be doggone humid outside. Tuesday Tuesday is going to be the day that we're going to watch out for the potential for a few thunderstorms. We do have a 40% chance for scattered storms on Tuesday. Temperatures will be pleasant through the middle of the week when we'll be back in the 90s by Thursday and Friday. Stephanie, David. Thank you, Sarah. I love the Mother's Day card <laughs> and the I love the, the flowers there on your yeah. planning forecast. For Mother's Day tomorrow. Very appropriate. So you're going to be just about a perfect Mother's Day. Yeah. Should be nice tomorrow. Medium yep. well. Yes, yeah. medium oh, well. <laughs> hey, you can still see pink and medium well. Yeah, that's, that's what I said, true. a little bit right that's there. That's true, that's true. <laughs> and when you're cooking those steaks for mom, make sure you get them right. 917, 65 degrees. A popular zoo open free of charge. Who they have to thank for all the business and what's new? Plus the second worst of four possible ratings up next, what Jeep Wrangler owners should know about its safety. That looks scary. Well, you're winning lottery numbers. Pick three, four, five, zero, fireball six, daily four, nine, eight, four, eight, fireball four. And your cash five is 13, 25, 26, 29, 31. And Mega Millions, five, 20, 22, 61, 70, Mega Balls four, Mega Pliers two, good luck. Welcome back, 921. In your consumer news, Jeep's latest Wrangler test showed an alarming tendency to tip over in a crash. As a result, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is giving the latest Wrangler a marginal rating. That's the second worst of the four possible ratings in that type of a crash test. The Insurance Institute says their findings apply to the 2019 and 2020 editions of the Jeep Wrangler. Meanwhile, tests show the Jeep actually did a good job of protecting the driver from the actual impact. But tipping over is a major problem because it can lead to the occupants being ejected from the vehicle.
In an Oklahoma zoo, getting a new name and a lot of attention thanks to Netflix, the Greater Winwood Exotic Animal Park, seeing a boost in visitors after it was featured on the docuseries Tiger King. Now many are in a rush to get out of quarantine and this place is first on their list of trips. While people were home, they not only watched the original docuseries, but they want to follow up with it as well. And when they reopened, their popularity clearly visible. Right now the entry fee is free. They are accepting donations, though. The docuseries has such a big impact on the zoo, it will soon be called Tiger King Park. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, very. <laughs> 922 <laughs> and 65 in so many ways on yes. so many levels. <laughs> You're right. And what would you do if you found thousands of dollars? Hmm. After the break, find out what this new Mexico team did and how the police responded. Welcome back. It is 926. One New Mexico teen being celebrated for returning a bag he found with a lot of money in it. So many might ask, what kind of 19-year-old would do that? <laughs> well, one who wants to be a police officer. It all started this week when Jose Nunez wanted to buy his grandfather some socks. Aw, so he stopped at this ATM and saw a bag. He says he was in shock and couldn't believe he was looking at it. So he also said in the back of his head that he was thinking about his parents. Yeah, instead, the 19 year old who is studying criminal justice called police. When they took the cash to the substation and counted it, it was $135,000. Oh Jose my goodness. And his parents were honored. <laughs> He was hired as a public safety officer, being that he is too young to be a police officer right now. So congratulations to yes. him. Good job. That's awesome. And, and already like a jump start on his yep. career. Honesty is the best policy. I agree. Way to go. I agree. 927, 65 degrees. I bet his grandfather got some socks out of this whole deal. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> In our next half hour, Texas Senator is showing his support for a small business owner after she was put in jail for a week. Plus, states continue to reopen amid the pandemic. Up next, what 75% of Americans had to say if their state opened up tomorrow. Always want to know who's sleeping in this morning. Who's, who's sleeping? Who's a lot, a right lot now? of people. A lot of people are. It's nine thirty. Yeah, it's Saturday morning, Mother's Day yeah. weekend. Yeah. Oh yeah, moms are like, oh, <laughs> two days worth of. Listen, bed. yeah, sleep in. It's okay. My sleeping uh, habits have changed. Oh, mine have too. <laughs> mine have. I do sleep in a little bit later now. Oh yeah. Except for Saturday and Sunday <laughs> mornings. Yeah, of course. When I'm up at 2:30 in the morning. <laughs> uh, and since I've been up at 2:30 in the morning, we've noticed that clouds have returned to San Antonio, but we're starting to see some clearing west of San Antonio. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Out toward Hondo, a little bit of sunshine there. Out toward Bandera and Kerrville as well. On the west side of Bear County, we are starting to see some thinning in those clouds as well. So although we've had a blanket of cloud cover this morning, we are going to see a mixture of sun and clouds as we head into into the afternoon, but still because we've had this wind from the northeast and a cool front moving through yesterday, our temperatures are not going to warm up too much. It's going to be a very pleasant Saturday. We're waking up on the cool side this morning, 64 at JBSA Randolph, 61 in the Lotus at 65 at the airport, even cooler up in the Hill Country, 59 at Bernie Stage Airfield and 59 in Kerrville, 56 in Lost Maples, 57 in Rock Springs. So those are just some of the cooler spots, but if you're waking up up in Del Rio this morning. It's nice and comfortable there too. 67 degrees. Great patio weather for this Saturday. In fact, if you want to sit out in the backyard, enjoy the nice weather, go for it. We do have those clouds out there this morning, uh, but again, we're starting to see some clearing 70 and mostly cloudy around noon. And then in the afternoon, partly cloudy with low humidity, 80 degrees. Gorgeous day. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It is Mother's Day weekend. Tomorrow for Mother's Day, you'll notice some changes and some good changes at that. I've got to look ahead to your Sunday forecast as well as our rain chances in the upcoming week. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We look forward to that. New this morning, one man remains in critical condition after he was shot by someone in a convenience store. Now it happened just before 1.30 this morning at the carry-on store on Northwest Loop 410. Police say a man walked into the store and began to fight with the other people there. That's when one of those people pulled out a gun and shot that man several times. Now that man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. The person who fired the shots was taken into custody. Charges are pending.
And police are working to track down the person who they say got shot a man in the stomach. Now it happened right after one this morning at a home in the 1000 block of South Hamilton Avenue. According to police, two men started fighting and one of them was shot. Now police say the suspect fled the scene and the person who was shot was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Witnesses from inside that home say the victim and the suspect knew each other well. Now to the latest on that incident that happened at the airport late last night. According to San Antonio International Airport Police, a pilot flying a twin-engine turboprop plane had trouble with the landing gear as he approached the runway. It happened just before 1030. Airport police say the plane landed on its belly, sliding off the runway before coming to a stop. Fortunately, the pilot was not injured and he was the only one on the plane. As we showed you live on KSA 12 last night on the 10 o'clock news, we were told by sources that it was a cargo plane owned by a company based out of Dallas. And here in Texas, we are in the second phase of reopening the state for the first time in more than six weeks. Hair salons and barbershops were able to open for business. Our KSET team visited Pure Posh Salon and VIP Nails and Spa to see what precautions they were taking to keep customers safe. Now, the state only recommends masks and social distancing and its guidelines for salons. However, both locations are also using protective barriers and hand sanitizer to keep customers safe. Look at this place right now. There's no magazines. There's no, you know, there's nothing really to touch. You just stand. So I feel like they've taken all the precautions they can do. The state also recommends both employees and customers be screened before showing up to those businesses. Meanwhile, all equipment must be cleaned and disinfected after each use. Stylists are also encouraged to schedule appointments and limit extra people in the shop. Speaking of haircuts, Senator Ted Cruz hopped a plane from Houston to Dallas to get his cut. He, the real purpose he did it was to show support for Shelley Luther. She's the hairstylist who was sent to jail for contempt of court after violating stay-at-home orders. Luther was sentenced to seven days in jail this week and given a $7,000 fine. She kept her salon open. The Texas Supreme Court ordered her released on Thursday. After the controversy, Governor Greg Abbott changed his executive order, removing jail time as a penalty. What are we doing when there's a police sting trying to go after beauticians for trying to earn a living? I mean, I mean, last I checked, there's some real criminals in the world. Yeah, Lucy is the only hairdresser targeted by law enforcement. Two beauticians in Laredo were arrested last month after an undercover police officer found him soliciting customers on social media. And Governor Abbott has said under his new executive order, they will not be fined or have to serve time in jail. In national news, all but a handful of states have begun to lift tight restrictions meant to stop the spread of COVID-19, but some are doing so as cases continue to rise. ABC's Trevor Alt is in New York with the division is causing and the hard decisions some business owners are having to make. With millions out of work, but the COVID-19 death toll now approaching 80,000, a new ABC News Ipsos poll shows 64% of Americans say reopening the country right now is too risky. And more than three in four Americans say even if there was a full reopening tomorrow, they wouldn't go back to work. Still, all but six states have started reopening in some capacity. California now moving into phase two of its plan. Low-risk retailers there offering curbside pickup. My best friend called me and she said, let's go. For me, it just gives me hope and I know that things will get better. At 25 sites statewide, long lines at the newly opened DMV. But restaurant owners like Ian Gresick are still waiting for the green light. And he's planning on only opening at 50% capacity. We can only do 50% capacity for so long, a month, maybe two. Other than that, there's no point. In Delaware, some businesses already opening to limited clientele. We only just doing 10 people a day. That's it. The main concern I have is people hiding that they're sick. And in Texas, as hair, nail and tanning salons can take customers. The appointments started flooding in. Um, I mean, they never stop. But some owners say they or their employees don't yet feel safe. Half of them are choosing to stay home, which, you know, is completely fine with us. We definitely want them to feel comfortable coming to work. Texas has continued to log about a thousand new COVID cases every day. One of 20 states nationwide lifting restrictions, even though the number of reported cases is increasing, according to the New York Times. Several businesses, though, say customers are hungry to return. 
and tourist attractions still drawing crowds. Wanting to take a little trip and get the kids out of the house and with all the quarantine and stuff. The GW Zoo in Oklahoma featured in the smash hit documentary Tiger King packed with new fans and curious onlookers. We are in the spotlight. Last weekend was insane, um, but of course everything went very smooth. And as law enforcement tries to enforce social distancing of the 368 people issued summonses and 120 people arrested by the NYPD, 68% are black, while just 7% are white. Mayor Bill de Blasio tweeting, the disparity in the numbers does not reflect our values. We have to do better. And another troubling development in New York, the death of a child with potentially COVID-19 related illness, suffering similar symptoms to toxic shock syndrome, now under investigation. Uh, we were led to believe that uh, the good news about this virus was it didn't affect children. Uh, this would be uh, really painful news and would open up an entirely different chapter. Back here at home due to the COVID-19 shutdown, some families have experienced devastating results, such as losing their jobs and the fear of not being able to even put food on the table. That's why Resurrection Church is organizing a major food drive. The goal, to collect more than 6,000 pounds of non-perishable food. Alicia Barrera joins us live I from Resurrection great. Church off of Jones Malt's Burger. So, Alicia, standing by the trash cans. Are they getting full? Sure, because he was on that side. I said, yeah, well, let me tell you, they're empty. Pastor Ray D. Brown here with me. We'll be speaking to him in just a few minutes. But let me show you right now. They're not as full as they would like them to be because the goal uh, filling a hundred of these barrels and that's between these two locations here in San Antonio and then the shirts location. So on your screen, if you're here in San Antonio and would like to donate, there's a location right off of Jones Maltzberger. That's where we're going live from. Then the second location is in shirts. So if that's one is closer to you and you have some non-perishable food items to donate, the address is on your screen. It's happening until 11 a.m. And then there's a sh second shift, two to four at both locations. Pastor Brown, good morning. For you, how important is it to get um, your the, the community from your church out here and volunteering? It's extremely important. There are a lot of needs out there and we want to meet every need. We want to bring relief to our community. And then today, um, honoring moms in a special way, you'll have the roses for them. How has it been just seeing the people trickle in this morning? It was a little different last week. Absolutely. And I, 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 you just said it. I believe because of Mother's Day, you know, there's a lot of different things going on, a lot of different activities. People are, um, there's a lot of, lot of activity going on, even with the school graduations and so on and so forth. So I understand, uh, but we still want to make maintain our goal of trying to do our part uh, to continue to meet the needs. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. And you mentioned the, the doors of the, the church are closed, but? The, the church is still open. The church is never closed. The doors might be closed. Uh, we're, we're literally the church without walls. The, in the book of Acts, uh, we believe that the church was uh, at its birth was the church at its best. And so we're, we're doing that right now, trying to show the best of uh, what a church is supposed to be about. Pastor Brown, thank you so much. And we, we see the, the best of the community here showing up to drop off these non-perishable food items. So if you at home have some extra canned goods at home, it's a good day to come bring them here to Resurrection Church to either the locations here in San Antonio or also in shirts. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. All right, Alicia, appreciate it very much. Thank that church and hopefully those barrels will get full. I think so. Give them time. San Antonio <laughs> always comes through. Yes. 942, 65 degrees. And still ahead, a major retailer filing for bankruptcy protection. How many stores it plans to permanently close. And taking a live look outside with city cam. It's going to be an absolutely gorgeous weekend for mom. So come up with some creative ideas for mom this week. Can't wait to see. You know, people have been hanging out with their moms a lot over yeah. the last couple of yeah. months. So some good creative ideas will be fun. Can't yeah. wait to see what they are. We're looking forward to it. And welcome back. It is 945. In your consumer news, JCPenney preparing to file for bankruptcy protection. Now, the bankruptcy filing would cap a long decline for the iconic 118-year-old department store chain. The Plano, Texas-based company, which employs nearly 85,000 people, is in discussions with creditors for a so-called debtor-in-possession loan. Now, as soon as next week, they have plans to permanently close 
about a quarter of its stores. Delta Airlines suspending flights to 10 airports across the country until at least September. The airline made the announcement Friday that will affect cities with more than one airport already served by Delta. For instance, in Chicago, Delta will halt service to Midway but will continue to fly into O'Hare. Delta plans to halt flights to smaller regional airports throughout the summer. The airline says the move is out of consideration for its employees, trying to limit their exposure to COVID-19. Well, we're talking about the pollen count to start the forecast. We just got this in. Mold is moderate at 630, so it's up a little bit from yesterday, and grass is low at 50. So not a bad pollen count, but not great with that mold being moderate. Here's a look at this morning's time lapse. We had a small sliver of a sunrise on the horizon, but really we've been dealing with mid and high level clouds today. You can actually kind of see in the time lapse those mid level clouds and then the high level clouds above it. We're going to have some stubborn cloud cover through the morning hours, but we're already starting to see some clearing, especially west of San Antonio. Look at these clear skies out toward Del Rio, Ya Valley, uh, parts of Real County and up toward Rock Springs as well. Even on the west side of Bear County and working your way up I-10 toward Bernie, we're starting to see some thinning in the clouds. And so it's going to be a really beautiful day today. Uh, we just have the cloud cover and it feels good outside right now. We've got low humidity, comfortable temperatures. Here's a look at that low humidity. Dew points in the 40s for most places, so that's pretty dry air all in the wake of yesterday's cool front, which moved through in the afternoon, and you definitely knew that cool front moved through because the winds were howling from the north yesterday, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. But right now we're sitting pretty in the 60s. It's 65 in San Antonio, 65 New Braunfels, 64 in Hondo in the low 60s up in the hill country, but it was in the 50s in Kerrville earlier this morning, 57 in Rock Springs and a comfortable 67 in Del Rio. Wider view here. Temperatures were in the 40s this morning in the panhandle of Texas. Uh, again, all because of that front that moved through. Let's take you through the future cast, and you can see that these clouds are going to hang on somewhat, but we will see a good mixture of sun and clouds in the afternoon. Notice that it'll be a lot sunnier out west of San Antonio today, but still temperatures should be comfortable this afternoon. Near 80 degrees around downtown San Antonio. Elsewhere, we'll be able to see a high temperature in the upper 70s, even only at 75 up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 78 in New Braunfels, and 77 in Seguin for the high. Low humidity, again, is the biggest thing today that you'll love about the weather. Again, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon will already be at 70 degrees around lunch. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. But tomorrow, tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. And as you wake up in the morning, we will not have as much clouds tomorrow. In fact, it'll be a mostly sunny day. And as you wake up, it'll be even cooler in the upper 50s for the morning low temperature. A very beautiful start to the day. Crisp and cool morning. If mom likes to wake up early in the morning, bring her that cup of coffee and encourage her to have it outside because it's going to be beautiful. Low humidity and sunny 83 degrees tomorrow for Mother's Day east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour in a pleasant evening. Humidity will be low through Tuesday. Tuesday, you'll notice the mugginess in the air, and we'll also have a chance for some thunderstorms on Tuesday. Scattered storms are going to be possible, uh, and with that humidity returning, you'll really notice it by the end of the week as high temperatures will climb back up into the low 90s. Unfortunately, we'll be back to that pattern of high humidity and high he heat by the end of the week, but it should be very comfortable through Tuesday. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. And we have some late breaking news to tell you about this morning. Musician Little Richard has passed away. Yes, this is the rock and roll artist who is credited with influencing Elvis and the Beatles. The death was confirmed by his son. Yeah, he didn't say whether his father, where his father died or he did not specify a cause. He just told us that Little Richard has now passed away. He was 87 years old. Time now, 950 and 65 degrees. Getting the whole family to get up and move just ahead when you can watch or yeah, watch volume two of Disney's sing along this weekend. Did you see volume one? It's pretty good. No, I haven't I seen it. That looks on. that looks fun. <laughs> good night. Yeah. Aw. And prepare for some singing while celebrating Mother's Day. Tomorrow, Disney is doing another sing-along right here on Case at 12. Yeah, it'll be the second edition of the special with your favorite songs from Disney movies. So Ryan Seacrest is returning. 
I recognize that one. <laughs> As the host for the Disney Family Sing Along Volume 2. So there will be new star studded performances and even more Disney magic. Here at Case at 12, we had an exclusive interview with Dancing with the Stars Pro dancers Val Sharmosky and Jenna Johnson. It was such a big success the first time that they're bringing it back, they're making it bigger, they're, they're bringing on more celebrities, they're, they have more dancing this time, so obviously there's going to be a lot of singing, uh, a lot of your favorite songs from your favorite movies, but uh, they're bringing in a lot more dancing, uh, and we're going to be a big part of that dancing, so we're really excited. Uh, hopefully we can put uh, some joy into the homes of families around this country, around the world, and uh, yeah, do our part in making making this a little bit smoother for people out there. That looks cool. This is also to raise awareness about Feeding America's vast network and resources for people who have been affected by the pandemic. Once again, you can watch it right here on KSA 12 tomorrow at 6 p.m. You said you watched the first one, right? Pretty good, yeah, and that's a good excuse to be dancing on the furniture at home, too. Mom can't get mad at you now. So <laughs> right, mom, I'm just doing what they're doing, right? Right there. Uh-oh. They're all over the couch. Mm. <laughs> 9.55. It's 65 degrees. Okay, kids, don't do that. Don't tell yeah, them I said you could. Right, right, right. Oh, no, don't Just get the intro. Just watch it. Don't, yeah. you know, recreate. <laughs> Taking a look outside with Trans Guide today. Uh, looking okay there at 1604 in Culebra. And not too bad there at 410 in Callahan Road. But if you have to head out, as always, be careful. We'll be right back. Resurrection Church is hosting a food drive. Resurrection Church is hosting a food drive and they really need your help. There are two locations, both 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then again, 2 to 4 p.m. The first location here in San Antonio, that's close to 281 and Loop 1604 off of Jones Maltzberger. The second location is for those in the Shirts area. Resurrection Church Shirts Campus is located on East Live Oak Road and they'll also be collecting food items. And let me tell you, their goal, it's pretty big. 100 of these food barrels to be filled in right now. They have six out here, but as you can see, they're not as full. By this time last week, they had already met their goal of about 40 barrels filled, so they need your help. Again, the locations in San Antonio in shirts. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. This woman is stepping up, helping out other women in the workplace tomorrow at GMSA at 6. Find out how Future for Us can help workers, companies, and maybe even you. Another look at the pollen count before you go. Mold ticks up a bit. It's moderate at 630 and grass is low at 50. It's 66 degrees outside in San Antonio, but it's 70 out toward Hondo. A little bit of clearing west of San Antonio, so we will see the sunshine today. Mostly cloudy skies, 80 degrees, low humidity. Mother's Day starting off in the 50s, topping off in the low 80s. Beautiful through Tuesday when we have a chance for some storms. So. A nice gift. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. Beautiful weekend. <laughs> thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching. Happy Saturday. Bye, guys.